Welcome to the It's a Mimic podcast, uh, Unscripted. This is Dan. With me today are Megan and Kyle, and we're doing another mailbag. Um, I don't even know what... This is mailbag 20, I think? I don't know, man. Yeah, I just work here. I wish I, we could pay you. Give us money. Anyways, yeah. so <laughs> the way these things work as a special little episode, about once every quarter we get together, we roll on some tables to answer questions from you. And it doesn't matter what you've asked us, it ends up on the tables and we read it. So, and answer it to the best of our ability. So it, anything about my freakishly long toes or the furniture I build to um, Kyle's haircut. So... Yeah, um, we're going to move you forward here. Cut? I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is the 20th mailbag. We all know what we're doing here. So let's grab our dice. Um, roll for initiatives to see who goes first. I got four. 11. 12. All right, Megan. Okay. What color would you like to roll on? Red. Red. Roll the red dice. Okay. Note, note how the dice are color coordinated. That, let's look at that. Uh, 15. Red 15. Oh, my goodness. You rolled a big one. Okay. Oh, Eric fuck. in Prague from, I'm assuming, Reddit. Specifically asked to be read 15, even though that puts him on the wrong table. Okay, cool. He asks, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, this is unscripted. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> um, when a member of the group says they want to try DMing for the group, what do you think about the existing DM taking on a DM PC role to help the new DM out? So it's kind of like co-DMing, but still a player. Until they get their feet. Apparently that's going to be the theme of this episode. Feet. Yeah. Under them. <laughs> or, toes. Yeah. or do you think a let them find their style, even if it's bumpy at the beginning approach, is better? So if a new player wants to DM for the first time. Have it like a DM coach. Have it like a DM coach in the game, either playing a DM PC or co-DMing. Like, uh, how do you, what, what, uh, what do you like? I don't know if I like the idea of being like a co-DM, but I do like the idea of having an experienced DM in the room that yeah. is more than welcome to and open to answering questions and helping you navigate things. Mm -hmm. Like even mm -hmm. just having somebody to take a quick sidebar with, being like, okay, this situation has occurred. I don't really know what to do. Dan can just yeah. we'll, we'll chat this out kind of thing like I like that idea mostly just because I personally don't DM a lot because I'm afraid of those things okay so um I wouldn't mind I like having a stronger player or a very experienced DM at the table giving me a hand but I wouldn't call them a co-DM because I would like to find my own style so kind of a mixture of the both yeah okay just just yeah. a nice friend yeah. yeah Kyle what do you think uh yeah I I'm, I wouldn't be into it because I'd be afraid of stepping on each other's feet there come the feet again. Um, but <laughs> All episode. <laughs> yeah. Let's not talk about coming and feet at the same time. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody stop. Okay, we yeah. take a breath. Okay. <laughs> but having after session kind of breakdowns with an experienced DM or your usual DM where you can kind of go over each other, you like, ask, um, how did you feel about that? Is there anything you would want to change? Um, is there anything, any feedback you can kind of give me as well? I like how you're going very corporate with this. Like, I feel like you're going to have a whole spreadsheet of like, please give me a one to five out of my role play capabilities, a one to five of my yeah. <laughs> problem solving capabilities and X, Y, Z. Well, I mean, Adam's not here, so somebody needs to be that, <laughs> level, that level of neurotic. Fair, fair. Um, no, I, I actually agree with you to a certain extent. Um, a codium at a table can end up being, and I've experienced this dozens of times, um, can end up being a bit of a crutch for the new play, uh, for the new DM. Mm. Um, I still recommend there be a DM at the table in case, like a, an experienced player or an experienced DM at the table, just in case there is one of those sticky questions that comes up. But I run every single last one of my tables under uh, a couple assumptions. One, DM has the final call, and because we are here for a limited amount of time, we're not going to get into an hour about a certain rule. We're, oh, not, yeah. we're yeah. not we're not going to the books rule to figure out how to graphic. Thing. Right? Yeah. Um, a DM, an experienced player at the table, is useful for those kind of discussions. Um, but it also, I like the idea of having a discussion after rather than during the game. Right? So that the DM could be like, listen, here's our, here are the rules that you kind of called. I wouldn't rule them this way. Or, or how do you feel about that rule? Or what, like, however you called that combat. Those kind of things are great to have after session. They're not so good to have during session. So I, I'm 100% I'm yeah. with you. They yeah. can throw someone off their groove too, right? If they're constantly getting feedback and worried about it. Yeah. All right, Kyle, I think that's uh, your turn, my friend. Oh, let's go with white. Okay. 
17. 17. Okay, hopefully it's not a... Oh, fuck's sakes. Um, this is from King of Rot. It uh, looks like from Reddit. So I'm looking for a way to teleport some broken glass into somebody's throat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your D&D question? It says, it does say, in brackets, in d and I'm a DM. <laughs> okay. I hope so. So my question is, if you could do this, how would you use it? In D and D. Okay, thanks. If, effectively, <laughs> good that they specified that. I, I feel like I just <laughs> I just described how to put broken glass in someone's throat. Uh, anyways, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, why teleport it when you can just crush it down and then put it into a bottle and make them drink it? I mean, if you push it through the skin from the outside in, eventually it's inside, right? But I feel like that's I the guess. thing you have to determine, yeah. is what kind of character or what kind of person is doing this. If it's a wizard, sure. Magic is a barbarian, shove it down their throat. Yeah. Um, no. I, I think they're asking what kind of spell could do this. Um, if Bongs they, to bees. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a, a really interesting polymorph spell could probably make it work. Um, ooh, ooh, here's how you do it. Uh, the spell that makes you hallucinate things. Uh, ooh, um, hypnotic. Uh, hypnotic oh pattern, God. I think is what it, yeah. no, hypnotic pattern is the area around you. This is the one where you're inside your own head. Um, I think, just use a mind flare and get them to do it. Would yeah, you? right? Yeah. Yeah. If you're a DM, throw a mind flare at them. Make them think, that, again, it's probably the same spell you're trying to think the name of. Yeah. But then just get them to think that they're eating a piece of bread, but it's actually just a glass bottle. Yeah. Okay. That's Mind flayers are the worst, but use them. They're great. You're welcome, DMs. What about gaseous form and you're just carrying it in your hands and then you get them to breathe you in? Yeah, but but then <laughs> you just fly you through in. and just let go of it as you're flying through them? Yeah. Just I like, mean, it's not teleporting, but it gets the job done. Could it just be like a dust that is, like a dust of glass that would, is there a spell that like, mm, like oh what is it what is it? um uh, what is the uh, it starts with an R what is the word for that spell when you when you build something back up what is it rejuvenate rejuvenate yeah so could you do that with an object rejuvenate an object I so mean like there are spells that do that yeah blow dust into their face and then have it rejuvenate <laughs> yeah you want you bottle. want whatever the opposite of <laughs> 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 okay you're welcome yeah. <laughs> I guess you do kind of want whatever the opposite of shatter is yeah. It just yeah. make a hole, and then it'll just it'll break itself within their throat. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I will wow, that's go... that's adding, like, insult to injury right there. Yeah. What about a bunch of shattered glass on the ground, and then gust of wind, and yeah. you just shoot it at them? Absolutely. Ooh, that'd be, like, a nice trap that's, like, in, like, a, someone's lair. Yeah. There's just tons of dust around that you think is just basic sand, but it's actually glass. And then they blow it up into your face, and then you have to do a constitution save whether or not you breathe it in or not. And then if you breathe it in, all of a sudden he rejuvenates the glass into solid shards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at this. I should be a DM. You are good at this. Yeah. You should be a DM. I agree. Okay, Terrifying I on so many levels. I cannot find this, this spell to save my life. I'm fairly certain it's a first or second level spell. It might be a third level spell. I don't know. But there is a spell where you make somebody... Um, and it's and it's escaping my mind right now. You make somebody believe that they're in a specific situation. I think it might be Crown of Madness. Crown of Madness sounds familiar. Right. Uh, and you just make them believe there is shattered glass in their throat. Oh, they wait, take oh. damage every turn. I mean, it's psychic damage. It's not literal glass. But that person believes it's glass in and their they throat. They stab at their own self. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. I'm into it. All right. All right. I'm going to roll. Um, I'm going to roll on the... You know what? Let's do the black table. Ooh, that's me. Black 13. Sounds All like right. Uh, you acididilog. I hope I pronounced okay, that right. Okay, bullshit fantasy name rule apply. Bullshit user name. Acid dialogue. Acid okay, dialogue. There okay. we go. Okay, I got it. I can read. Uh, y'all are DMs. What are your character creation go-to rules? What homebrews for character creation have you tried that went well and which ones were a flop? Um, Dave espouses the roll 6 d20 for character creation as they lie. Uh, fuck that. Fuck that hard. Um, my D20s hate me. My D6s love me. So if I'm rolling my stat line, I'm using my D6s. Because I will wind up with 1, 1, 3, 5, 1, 4 as my stat line. And yeah. nobody wants that. Um, but rules for character creation that I think... <sighs> I like to I like my players at the table to feel a little bit like superheroes. So I have run two great effects... Um, just giving everybody a feat at level one. 
Yeah. Mm. Um, I really like doing that. It has an opportunity to build a little bit more flavor. And a lot of the tables I run are guys who are used to like 3.5 and Pathfinder where it's just like it is character building and theory crafting and giving them a feat at level one really helped with that process. So I'm on board with that. Uh, things that didn't work out are actual standard wizards provided homebrew or rules variant, which is the custom lineage mm-hmm. that they provide in Tashes, is weaker than all the other races, even though it is still a feat. And every single time I have a player start trying to make it or make their own background, same story, they just end up making uh, choosing one of the other ones for simplicity's sake. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's needlessly complicated and time-consuming um, for not a whole hell of a lot of flavor or whatnot to the game. So... Give them, give them a feat at level one. It yep. always works out. And honestly, if they're too powerful, f- throw another monster in the fight. Figure it out. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, I, just, I don't think I've ever started a game at level one. Really? Yeah. No, you, you have. We no, started like, level no one. as a player. But like I've never, like the small amount of games I have DM'd, I've always started at level three or five. So that there is enough for them to actually get involved in a character. I find the longer players spend time putting their character together the more dedicated they are to the character, therefore the more dedicated they are to the game. I find level, starting with a level one character makes them feel very... I, it, it's like a throwaway character. I'll start another one if I have to. Like, I'm not necessarily dedicated to this. I'm not putting together a huge backstory because mm. I'm one years old, right? Yeah. So I find that that can help is starting at, like, the mid-levels to give them a little bit more meat to play with at the beginning. There's nothing worse, too, than spending all this time creating a character and then they just die in the first session. Yeah. And right. it's just it's just disheartening. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So. All right. I think that makes it. Uh, I'm with oh. you on the free feed of level one. I think it adds a little extra zhuzh to the whole character creation process and really m- helps it come alive. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I don't think I have any homebrew rules. So like 46 drop the lowest for stats. Yeah. You mean one. you don't do the point by system? No. I, I typically do the point oh, by. Man. We had a big debate on this in one of our last episodes, didn't we? Yeah, uh, we did. Uh, I think it's an episode that is not released yet as of this one. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah coming it, up. <laughs> it's coming out like May, I think. But uh, yeah, uh, I I like 46 because I get super powered characters when I'm a player. But when I'm a DM, I like everybody to kind of be on the same playing field just to breed fairness at the table. Yeah. Um, and 27 point by. Do you find it always comes out to the same stat levels? No. Right? Like, uh, I'll pretty much always pick the same stats. Like, I'll go 16, 16, 12, 10, 8, I think is how it works out to do. Uh, something like that, yeah, with racial modifiers. Yeah. I think you're right. Um, the Okay, there's always going to be the people that are like, I'm playing a barbarian, all I need is strength and con. So strength and con, everything else is 8. And they'll dump, uh, they'll bump up their strength and con as much as they can, Fair. and any leftover points they'll just throw in dexterity just cause. So their their all of their social skills are going to be eights. Um, if that is the character you want to build, okay, I guess. But if that's the character you are that you've built and you're playing them like they're Sherlock, you've you've played a character that you don't you've rolled a character you don't want to play. Yeah. Right. So I really encourage my character uh, my players to build characters that they want to play. Yeah, you'll be the strongest person in the world. True. You could take a hit as well. Great. I'm not throwing high combat games at you all the time. Sometimes when I'm tired and lazy and just want to throw a horde of goblins at guys, I'm going to do that. But other times you're going to have a political dialogue with a local region, right? (laughs) I'm going to throw a bunch of kobolds to you, and we all know. Talk to your kobolds. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man. Yeah, sometimes, but I make it painfully aware to my players that... Uh, we're doing more than just combat here. And if you are shirking on the other two pillars to really enforce one, you're going to be spending two thirds of this game feeling left out. Yeah, absolutely. Megan, your roll. Uh, I'm going to do red table. Eight. Eight. Finisher 7119 oh God. asks. Where did It's a Mimic come from? Megan, where did It's a Mimic come from? Um, Adam, Dan, and Terry one day said, Hey, Megan, would you like to co-host on an episode of our It's a Mimic podcast? And I was like, what the fuck is that? And that is where It's a Mimic came from. For you. Yeah. Kyle? Uh, this is my first day 
I just got here. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I actually think you came on during the pandemic, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes, when we were doing the mob mentality episodes, we were like, holy shit, we need somebody to throw. Yeah. We need another voice on an episode. <laughs> hey, shit, there's Kyle. Let's bring Kyle in. Um, I guess I, I guess this question really comes to me where Adam and I uh, met up. In, I, we've told the story before. Uh, I met. I drove in behind Adam at a Tim Hortons parking lot and uh, at a drive through And Adam and I go way back. I've known him since I was five. So I give him a call. I'd be like, hey, I'll take a extra large two cream. Just pay for it. I'll pick it up on the window as I get there. And he's like, hey, uh, fuck you. But by the way, we have some players leaving our D&D game. On Sunday nights, can, I know you love D&D. Can you come out and play to kind of replace them? Are you free? And I'm like, shit, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down for another game of D&D. Why not? So went there for that. That was in, eventually how I met Megan. Because yeah. when those two players, uh, Jess and Jamie, finally left, you were good friends with Jess. Yeah. And she and you needed a new D&D game at that point. So you came on. Um, I regret every day ever since. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, but... Uh, Adam and I were sitting there being our typical uh, echo box of narcissism. And we're like, man, we're brilliant and funny. And everybody should hear the shit that comes out of our mouth. Yeah. So Checks out. we spent yeah. about six months tossing around several different ideas for a podcast with just the two of us. Most of them were kind of like campaign builder where we were building a campaign and showing our process for world building. Um, and then we looked at the internet and we're like, there is a million and a half of those. We want to find something else. Um, we ended up, uh, settling on, um, it's a mimic after four or five different titles. And we're like, we need, we need someone a little bit more charismatic than me and Adam on the microphone. So we brought Terry on Mm -hmm. and, uh, that, that was our biggest mistake. Um, (laughs) fucking Terry. Fair, 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 fair. fair. Um, but, uh, yeah. So I guess the rest is, they say is history. We, uh, started it. Four years ago now. But we, where did the name come from? Where did the name come from? Yeah. Um, well, the name of the podcast was originally Town Time. No, it wasn't. It really was. Yeah. It sounds like a children's cartoon. Yeah, what a great which, which is one of the reasons why we changed it. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, Adam and I went through our heads thinking, what is like an iconic saying in D&D that isn't already something else? Yeah. Right? And event, uh, we wanted to be like the mimic podcast for a while but there's already a couple mimic related podcast titles yeah um none of them too active from what we could tell uh we reached out but got no response back so we're like all right it's a mimic let's let's roll with that that's more of a thing it's a mimic with an exclamation point move on uh we got art from a good friend of mine katie who is wonderful and the rest is history love that for us yeah Mm -hmm. Oh, that's me again. Yeah. I'm going red too. Red too. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. We literally just rolled that. Yeah. So yeah, that's eight. a that's an eight no on red. Eights. A six. six. Okay. No what? We're we're doing uh we're doing this. Uh, this is finisher seven one one nine again. Yep. Asking, what is your hottest hot take? Oh. Note, we are a D podcast, but this does not say within D D. Oh. So what is your hottest hot take? I'd rather not get censored. You're in a safe place. No. Mm. We don't kink shame because we're going to I'm really into feet. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, what's your hottest hot take? You being really into feet is now on the internet. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to start at only yeah. toes, so if you want to join, we can just do yeah. <laughs> I know what? I would feel bad for you, but I've been told that I now uh, not only have daddy power, which I don't understand... But also, uh, I build... Who told you you have daddy power? Oh, yes. people okay. online. All right, all right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which you haven't met me. Just wait till you meet me. Um, the... <laughs> That's what I was like, who told you? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the confidence, Mr. You're welcome, Megan. sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, but also that I build BDSM furniture in my garage. Yeah. Yeah, that's, mm. that's, that's, a, that's a super great one. I, I think I posted today in our little uh, It's a Mimic chat that I deeply regret, yes, ending a lot of the shit Adam has thrown at the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Um, <laughs> it's just imagining now your safety equipment is just like a leather gimp suit. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's where he gets his daddy yeah. power from. I understand. <laughs> it's all coming together for me. Um, 
But I, actual hot take. Um, it's going to piss off my L5R group, but fuck the D10 system. I like the D20 system. Really? Yeah. That That is quite shocking. That's a hot take. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Swallow that. <laughs> L5R has been a big part of our chats recently, but yeah. I used to play Vampire the Masquerade, which is also a D10. A D10 system, yeah. And um, I, I, after our discussion, which just involved a lot of anime man candy, yeah, absolutely. Um, I those, those men have daddy powers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. I am a straight man, and still, yes, absolutely. Um, the uh, I looked up the rules, like started looking into the rules for L five R, and yeah, no, I prefer D twenty. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's too much. Oh. Yeah, that's my hot take. All right, I think it's my roll now, isn't it? I think so. I'm gonna go white table. Throw it out. That's me. Nineteen. Oh god. You... Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, where does this start? Okay. This is just a comment from KS from YouTube says, timestamps would be nice. Okay. Is that is that the is that the comment? Yeah. Okay, uh, there are timestamps in newer episodes. Just go to the newer ones. Uh, and so far, but part of our process is now adding tam- timestamps to the episodes uh, for YouTube. How wonderful. I feel like we all can all agree that if I was to actually have to do the editing of this podcast, it would just be all of the sex jokes for half an hour and then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would contend that this podcast is like 80% sex jokes, yeah, that's true. 10% mm-hmm. D&D. And 10% shit we cut out so that no one on the internet ever has yeah, to Yeah, we keep it. that for ourselves. Yeah, we keep that for us. <laughs> That's for us and us alone. Megan, it is your role. Uh, black table. 19. Ooh, okay. Uh, Christopher Heigl Helgi Sigrosen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Sent us an email saying, in the first Barbarian episode, you counted up the numbers rolled for each host. Have you been keeping up that count, or has that fallen by the wayside? When we do these things, a uh, little peek behind the curtain. Uh, apparently, these are all answers for me. Yeah, get yeah, together. great. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Adam. I'm throwing in my two cents. When I'm <laughs> um, so, peek behind the curtain. We have little charts in front of us. One labeled red, one labeled black, one labeled white, um, and each one is a d20 table. As we go through, we mark off the ones that we've done, and then I am going to crumple these into a ball and whip them at Adam's head as hard and as fast as I can and then he will put them on a spreadsheet somewhere so my guess is that yes there is a number of like a statistics diagnostic of what we've rolled across the entire podcast if you've made it to this episode you know that I am not the person that's going to keep track of that 100% yeah um and you know that Adam is yeah so please on Instagram Reddit Send us an email. Bug the shit out of Adam. Um, he'll relentlessly. Do he'll do yeah, the math. he'll do the math. Yeah, <clears throat> and and anything that makes his life more complicated. We're going to make him do it. We're going to make mm-hmm. him do it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, got it. Oh, uh, black it is. Seven. Oh, yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah that's you have the black table there, bud. Uh, Colton Adrian says, I just heard the commercial for the upcoming mailbag, and Adam calls us, the listeners, NPCs. So my question is, as an NPC, how are you going to kill me off? Lungs to bees. <laughs> lungs, <laughs> lungs to bees. That's a spell in L5R. <laughs> Wait, really? That is terrifying. <laughs> you just fill someone's lungs it's with bees? It's a similar thing to like a and d thing where you just you flavor it for your character kind of thing. But it yeah. happened in a campaign where you turn someone's lungs into bees. Yeah. That's horrifying. Isn't it great, though? Isn't it just great? <laughs> How are you killing an NPC? Uh, ooh. I'm going to snap your neck with a Kraken. Oh, that'll do. Yeah. That'll do. Okay. okay um, sure. I am always a fan of the uh, dairy cow hurling hill giant. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, this one's but, new to but, me. But, but the cow doesn't kill you. It just hits you and then pins you to the ground and you drown in a puddle of your own blood. That is how I kill NPCs. As Owls. graphically as possible. Like and blood mixed blood. with milk? Yo, yeah, of course. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Because they're milking the cow while they're dying? <laughs> oh my god. Then they can't breathe, their hands are flailing, but they're like milking the cow at the same time. Well, I mean, if the hill giant oh, lander's loving it. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. I, hate it. <laughs> I mean, if a hill giant can whip a cow so fast that it can pin you with it, I mean, a little milk is going to squirt out. Yeah. 
All I can picture is like the Twister trailer where the cow is like in the oh, tornado. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, my turn to roll. Uh, I am going to. No, I'll roll on black table too. Four. Four. Um, the printer had a little miss out, so I can't quite read this. Ker Ker Bitter asks if you could never eat bread again or never eat potatoes again, which would you choose? Fucking, I'm Irish. I would choose potatoes. To never eat potatoes again? Yeah. No, no, no. I'd never eat bread again. I would eat okay. potatoes. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got a lifetime without bread. I could I could live without bread. I could not live without potatoes. I, I'm currently doing keto, so I can't do either. I was going to say, I've done keto for years as well. And, like, I just, I'm yeah. used to, like, restriction as general. But, like, I would give up bread in a heartbeat for potatoes. Yeah, I could never do keto. I could never give up either one. But I'd give up bread. Keto's a lot of dairy, so you got to watch out for the cows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can just do potatoes so many ways. Exactly. I mean, so, you can do bread so many ways because bread also includes like donuts. In toast and... or not toasted. There are more ways. So then, are we there? considering bread as like anything that is created out of yeast? Is that what we're considering a bread item right now? I, I think we are. Well, no. Uh, or are we yes. only considering if it is a loaf? Uh, you keep okay, in mind you can no longer have pancakes or waffles anymore. But that again, that's if because but those, those, are those don't have yeast. Those are yeah. soda. Those are baking sodas. Well, those are, no, isn't bread just wheat? But that's the thing. What are we determining? Is bread wheat or is bread Because the difference yeast? here is like potatoes to bread, I think they're going wheat to, to starch. Okay, right? so their like, main yeah. core ingredients. So yeah. you're wheat-based. So, so, so you're celiac or you're... <laughs> yeah, you're, okay, you're celiac or you're <laughs> Irish in the 1800s. Potato intolerant. I don't know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Megan, I believe it's your turn. All right. Um, I'm going to roll on my own table because it's feeling pretty lonely. So the white table. 15. It's my lucky number. That's a 16. Is it? Okay, well, I told you my glasses aren't working together. <laughs> uh, Sweetaboo from Looks Like Reddit says, I'm not a woodworker. I can see where this is going. God damn. But I'm thinking about... <laughs> But I've been thinking about building a larger table for my players. What features would you see in your would you see in your dream D and D table? Thanks for the great work. Been hooked on since Tyler turned me on to the podcast. Thanks, Tyler. Also here for the Travis slander. No, oh, <laughs> I will. I will. I will slander Travis every day of the week. Oh, he that. was supposed to swing by today. We we're going to talk about new mic stuff, and he just no showed. What? So fuck you, Travis. What a dick, Travis. <laughs> also, I wasn't here, so really, it was my fault too. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, my number one thing for a D and D table, though, however, is cup holders. Yeah. Because um, we just witnessed it last week. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Where we spilled a glass of wine all over the cookies that were brought. And it was a sad, sad day. <laughs> Thank you for being gracious and saying we. I, well, I just, without pointing any fingers to some well, certain bald headed asshole. It was Dan. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we promptly made Dan eat the wine soaked cookies. <laughs> <laughs> the first one wasn't so bad, but it was just like lightly absorbed. It was not great. No, the the ones that were like fully saturated with red wine, like Whoa. chocolate chip cookies, saturated, it's like soggy, soggy red with wine. red wine. Yeah, not not a good thing, y'all. That was not fun. Not least, a vibe. Uh, at least you feel good afterwards. Yeah. What's on your dream table? Uh, I mean, I would have gone with cup holders too, but if I'm going to expand on that, also like a bowl holder, so I snack can have tray. yeah, snack tray that you can like pull out, keep to the side. I know right. none of this is D&D related. Yeah. It's just food consumption related. <laughs> I mean, they go hand in hand. hand. You can't right have here. one without the other. Well, uh, here, here's mine. Um, I We've we've come up with a couple plans for tables in the past uh, because I do actually do woodworking. Oh, well, we know. Not that kind, but I do. Uh, one of the things I've always wanted is a way to put the table away. Really, really nice and easy. Yeah. Okay. So um, I've always liked having TVs in my tables. So with the TV in the table, if you have it on hinges so that it flips uh, vertically and you can push it up against the wall, then you just have a TV. That it's kind of like a, a Murphy bed, but for your table. Murphy bed, but for your table. And then your TV appears when you Murphy bed it up. Yep. Like but that. you could also play D&D &D on top of the table. Dope. Yeah. Like that a lot. Like with the right. TV. I, you got to go with high walls then too to prevent spilling if you're going to put a TV in there. Oh, what? Yeah, don't let me at that table. Yeah. Yeah, that'll just go poorly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Kyle. Okay. Yeah. White table. Okay. That's an eight. That's me. Okay. Um, Kisu Karnage says, Being a fan for a year or so, just now reaching out on Reddit. First, let me just say you are all amazing. <laughs> Bless. <laughs> um, I agree. And I look forward to every episode. 
On to my question. What magic items do you think are the most underrated in 5th edition and why? Also, y'all be nice to Terry. <laughs> oh, okay. We should have read this one earlier. Oh, my Lanta. Never. <laughs> <laughs> we can answer that first one. That second's a no-go. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> um, magic weapon that's underrated. Um, is it magic weapon or item? Sorry, magic item, I believe is what it said. Let me reread that. Do, 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 do. Yeah, magic items. Okay. Um, uh, recently in a game I used whatever that um, the, it was like a stone of warming or whatever it was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that was that's pretty fucking neat. Like, don't get me wrong, a lot of DMs don't play the survival aspect in games, but like, I think it's a very cute little thing to have. That if you're at a campfire, or, like if you're out in the woods or whatever, and you can't quite light a fire because you're, you're like trying to hide and sneak around or what have you, or you're in a dungeon and you can't light a fire because you're in a goddamn dungeon, you're going to smoke yourselves out like happens on a regular basis. Yeah. Figure it out, my guys. Um, <laughs> I just think it's a really cute thing to have, especially if you're trying to make friends with the people in your group. It's an item that would bring people together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ka? Um, I don't know if it's underrated, but Displacer Cloak is really good. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. Then, and then there's another one. Um... It's like a rod. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but basically it turns any um, one target spell into an AOE. It like it's if you have a let's say Eldritch Blast, right? Rather than um, just hitting one target, it'll have a five foot radius. Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't. I've I've, I've, yeah. I've never actually heard of that. Either. I think it's like a uncommon too. Okay, is, is really that or Is that in stock? I think it's in stock. Oh wow. Okay. Um, I was going to that one down for Dan. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please. Um, I I really like Xanathar's and how it gave us common magic items. Yeah. That are yeah. just the most bullshit thing, like Cape of Billowing. Dope. Fucking just yeah. I was going to say Cape of Billowing, but I was just yeah. like, no one else is going to love that. <laughs> right. Like <laughs> if if you are playing a combat heavy campaign, get yourself a Cape of Billowing. Why? Because you are going to get that heroic stance on a hill during sunset scene right and sure there might be a breeze but now your cape billows the way fucking you want it to yeah right so um you can make an entrance everywhere you go yeah wand of smiling is up there as well for me (laughs) with just like the i'm i'm sorry you're really mad at me (laughs) right just as the prankster uh aspect of it um but that one is less underrated just because critical role used it to great effect so yeah um uh, any of the common magic items uh, for me are uh, severely underrated. I would rather a bunch of small, no attunement, fun little, like, almost not mechanical effect items, like a capabilowing, yeah. to a plus five Vorpal Greatsword. Yeah. It's for the story, guys. It's yeah. For the story. It's for the story, right? Yeah. My, my, so actually, my favorite magic item ever, still to this day, is the stool that I could summon with a magic, like a command word. No. <laughs> like my, my old man dragonborn character who just needed to sit down and conversations were taking too long would just pull up this little stool from his uh, pocket, say the magic word, and sit down. That's kind of adorable, actually. That's very cute. I yeah. Love that. It, it, was, it was fucking great. My favorite magic item I've ever had. Mm. I love that for you. Yeah. Um, it's my go. Yeah, it's you. Um, I just rolled. You know what? Let's go with white. I'll go with white table. All right. <clears throat> a six. Six. A groundbreaking top 33 from Reddit says, I have a player that wants to invent a rifle. Okay, here we go. Okay. I personally do not have a problem with it, but I want him to earn it. How would we go from the design phase to actual use? Any special materials that can be used um, that can be quested? Uh, make him get it piece by piece. My big caution to you as a DM is, yes, he can make a rifle. Sure. Okay. Um, if he wants to make, like, a bad news level critical role kind of, like, sniper rifle, okay. Um, it is a series of rolls over a series of uh, sessions of gameplay. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. It is not just something they get. Um, make it make sense within your world's physics yeah i was gonna say like i've played in games where rifles existed but it was because but gunpowder was very hard to find yeah mm-hmm. so it's kind of like finding a diamond to do your big ass spells and actually using like resource management guns existed and you had one but gunpowder was illegal and hard to find yeah so 
Yeah. Um, I would also try to be creative with it as best I can. Instead of a, like to solve the gunpowder issue, make it a rail gun. Bind an elemental, like an air elemental to the rifle, a lesser air elemental, who will then shoot these little pellets out at high velocity. Yeah. Right? Mm. It doesn't have to be pull the trigger, bang. Gun for ha- gun. Gun for gun, right? Yeah. This could just be a high velocity projectile weapon that because of its power in your fantasy world should probably be prone to breaking. Yeah. But don't destroy it. Have them be able to repair it even mid-combat, right? Have the gun jam. Spend an action to repair. Spend an action or a bonus action to repair. There's a bunch of ways out there. I like the idea of making it, uh, like, he has to build it himself, befriend a blacksmith to kind of get him to do it, and then you can turn it into blacksmith. Uh, blacksmith has like a tit for tat where okay i'll do this for you but you have to do this for me first yeah yeah but yeah quest giver blacksmith love it <laughs> uh me <clears throat> i'm pretty sure you yeah no i rolled me? this one yeah it's my turn yeah your yeah. turn okay. red table 16 red 16 haha <laughs> yes spidey rich asks how long was your longest dungeons and dragons session or rather, actually, this does say how long was your longest session. Okay, so it doesn't have to be Dungeons no, and Dragons. No, no. Okay. <sighs> and you have to answer first? I do. Okay, yeah. so in our L5R campaign, we do have an After Dark, which means we'll play for a regular eight-hour session, and there's usually like a five- to eight-hour session of After Dark after that. So we will sometimes go for a solid 16 to 20 hours, but that's my regularly longest game that I will play. The longest session we've ever had was probably about, I'm going to say, 25 hours. We played for a Jesus. Weekend. This was back when I was young and spry and was able to stay awake that long. But yes, that was, well, yeah, dedicated folk. What goes into a L5R After Dark game? None of your business, Dan. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, man. Cool. <laughs> you consider starting a podcast about it. Because <laughs> I, am, I am also curious. <laughs> I would love to tell you guys some of my L5R stories, but I feel like I just would not do them justice. <laughs> <laughs> Judging from the pictures in our Discord. Let's just yikes. say my character has a roster. <laughs> <laughs> Great, they're harem romance novels. You're Great. welcome. Reverse harem. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 36 hour LAN party when I was. Yeah, this doesn't say game. This doesn't yeah. say tabletop gaming. I think that was the longest gaming session I ever had. I, I remember balls energy drinks. Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, good times. Yeah. 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 If if we're if we are talking uh, gaming, um, I was straight up unemployed for three months in World of Warcraft's heyday, um, and had enough money in my savings where I just ate pizza and Chinese food and drank pots upon pots of coffee and Pepsi every single day. Yeah. Um, there were days I remember playing with my friends at night. They'd go to bed. I'd play through the night. They'd wake up. They'd log in. We'd play for an hour. They'd go to work. They'd log on. I'd still be playing. We'd oh, play Dan. through the night. I remember those days. I met my wife on World of Warcraft. You know, I fair. don't regret you know? these days because it has given me a life of joy with the kids that I love. It's been fantastic. Mm. They were too long and I was greasy. Um, and it took me meeting a girl on the internet who lived very far away to have a relationship. So, bonus, positives and negatives. Yeah. Um, if we're talking D and D, I played a twenty-one and a half hour. Yeah, Dan. Um, uh, Get it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, keep on the Borderlands game oh. way back in the day. Uh, my buddy Nick DM'd it. We all gathered around the table. Uh, my buddy Genj got murdered. Um, his character, not him. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we were we were young enough where none of us drove, um, but all of us had bikes, so we loaded up duffel bags on the side of our bikes, mm-hmm. went to the grocery store, and just picked up no-name brand chips and two-liter bottles of Coke. Yeah. As many as we could carry back. Yeah. And then we would polish that off. And we we would do that in the weekend. We'd go home. We'd sleep for uh, like 20 minutes, go to school. Yeah. And then the next weekend we would do it again. So 21 and a half hours was the longest of the bunch. Yeah. Um, And I remember at about hour 18 just getting loopy. Yeah. It gets weird. Yeah. It gets real weird. But I love how everyone has like the determined like long session snack. I remember my girlfriend and I used to play Champions of Norath back in the day. Yeah. And that was, our, that was like our go-to every weekend. We'd try and see how far we could get through Champions of Norath in one sitting. And it was always a full Safeway cake. <laughs> 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 this is a full Safeway cake. 
And then we would make fond chocolate fondue and dip Swedish berries in it. Oh. I was a healthy young lass. Uh, <laughs> one, uh, yeah, this is actually peak behind the curtain. You to eat, uh, though. Um, one of the ways Adam and I fostered our friendship when we were growing up, um, Adam and my brother were really good friends growing up. And um, my brother didn't like having me around all that often because I was the annoying little brother. Makes sense. But they started a thing called Cake Night with a buddy of mine named Russell. Love that. And uh, this was every Thursday night they'd walk, grab a Safeway cake. Why is it so? Safeway cakes are dead. Ta- just oh, it, 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 it's so good, yeah, right? Great. But they would bring it back and they would sit around, play video games, listen to loud music, and eat the cake. But it wasn't like they would cut it up into slices. No, they would just grab a fork. Yeah. And everyone would just have a bite of cake at a 100%. time. 100%. Yeah. Um, yeah. Post-COVID, would never fucking do that. Nope. Now, now the COVID's happened, I will never do that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, right? period. Everybody gets their own individual nonsense. I saw some guy spit face. on the ground the other day and got like physically reviled oh, from so it. Ill. I would yeah. not be happy yeah. with that. I feel like we would have been friends in high school, but then again, I don't Probably. think so. No, I know. no, I would. You <laughs> know me in high school? No. Nah. no. We were scouts, though. We would have been good scouts friends. Uh, Yeah, but you're a girl. And I was afraid of girls until I was 20. <sighs> True. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, who asked that question? Uh, that, that was you. That was me. So yeah. Oh, that's me. Yeah. I, I'm turn. gonna roll on my own table. Screw you guys. Then <laughs> Nick Long asks, How, "Do beholders blink? Because if they blink, that means they have eyelids, and with eyelids, you get eyelashes. And now all I can picture is a beholder with just long, beautiful eyelashes fluttering when it blinks. Also." A blink would also cancel the anti-magic field, which is also interesting, but to a lesser extent. I was gonna say like the eyelashes would kick up dust for sure, like like a, like a like a just a big wind. fan, I just a, just a gust of wind. <laughs> <laughs> All I can picture though is like those bug beetle cars that they would put the eyelashes on yeah. the headlights. Oh my god, I fucking hate those things so much. I, I, I see them on Jeeps all the time too. Oh, gross. <laughs> For me, and I mean, we don't kink shame on the podcast, but if you are sexualizing beholders, friend, they're like. Yikes. You don't want to have a beholder bat their eyelashes at you? Uh, the, no. And, like, it would be 11 eyelashes. Yeah, Adam, I need you to build a beholder. Why? <laughs> with eyelashes. Why are you doing this thing? <laughs> Stop <laughs> doing this thing. Because you know that's going to be at our table. Oh, 100%. Uh, <laughs> the horny bard's natural nonsense. I'm the bard! He's yeah. the horny bard! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining a beholder, like, giving you that sexy o- over-the-shoulder, like, <laughs> eyes. What shoulder? Uh, whatever. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. It, like, it's tentacles swoosh like a yeah. dress. It's like, <laughs> 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 it's like a cloak and pillow. <laughs> Friends, we don't get a lot of fan art. Please... Give me fan art of this. I, w- I, I actually now want to see a, a sexy beholder with a capability. Yeah. <laughs> with eyelashes. With eyelashes. It's got to have the eyelashes. Okay, it's my turn. Yeah, I'm going to roll on the black table. Oh, we rolled 19 already. Yeah. Rolling it again. 12. You're on the black table. Yeah, it's you. Uh, Colton Adrian asks, as non-Americans, what is your perception of American America slash Americans without getting too political? <laughs> I married one. I was going to say, Dan's... <laughs> Biased. Biased. Um, that, that's actually another one of the fun things of the podcast that I should never have yes and is that the Midwest accent and me are uh, near and dear friends. Yeah. yeah. Dan, uh, say plastic bags for us. Plastic bags. <laughs> uh, so I, I... The people of America, by and large, are fantastic, wonderful, warm-hearted people. There is a very small section of that, as an outsider view, Mm -hmm. that need to really reevaluate their, how they display their beliefs. Mm. Um, Because they are associated with something I associate myself with very closely, and that is our faith in God. Um, And the way they behave while also espousing a Christian faith. Really bothers me. Um, it's an extra level for you. It, yeah, it's a super extra level. Um, so I, I, I love Americans. Um, America as a idea. That's a different topic. Not to bring it down too low. Um, I, I am a proud Canadian and um, will hopefully remain that way. Mm-hmm. All I can think of my head is America. Fuck, Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I don't like what you do. I love your food. <laughs> yeah. 
You know what? You know what? Uh, I don't know about all their food. I mean, the deep fried butter okay, is a little far. Okay, the biscuits bar. and gravy, my guy. Have you never had biscuits and gravy? Uh, no, I can't say I have. Oh, oh my god. Atlanta. Okay. No. Um, I the been Rosa in. salad, my god. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I've had that. My grandma used to make that all the time. Yeah. That's just apples and whipped cream and walnuts, right? And marshmallows and other fruits. And oh, Jello. I, uh, yeah. What? What? Yeah, there's yeah. a lot to it. Yeah. And you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I've, I've had it, I've had it with Jello, marshmallows, recipe. and mayonnaise. Mm. Oh. Yeah, and it was it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Yeah. Gotta you, love that you, Mims West folk. You, your food goes from so good to so bad. To what the fuck are you doing? Bad. Yeah. To, to be fair, the best, the absolute best barbecue I've ever had was in Vancouver. So True enough. However, I do love Trader Joe's. Yes. Thanks for Trader Joe's. Thank I'll you for Target as well. Uh, Praline bacon. Mm. Mm-hmm, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. so the thing we love about America is the food. The food. That's the people as far are. As people I can go. Are I'm a proud Canadian. Good. Otherwise. I'll agree. I'm a proud Canadian. Yeah. Otherwise, but the yeah. food. The food. Like I gotta give it to you. Some of it is real good. Yeah. Uh, as for America, late stage capitalism scares the shit out of me. Yeah. Um. And and you know, boost your humility and. Uh, be better. Be better. Okay. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> is that Dan? That's you. That's me. That's me. Yeah. Okay. Um. I will do. Let's keep. Red. Red table. Red 10. Spidey Rich asks, what is the favorite monster you've never been able to use or fight? I don't know enough about monsters to make a decision. Just go across the board. It could even be like some weird L5R Japanese gai- uh, kaiju level. So it's like gaijin bullshit. Yeah. Uh, well, it's usually just human versus human. It's not usually demon versus demon. I prefer... Oh. Um, like Japanese, Chinese, Korean, especially. Well, it's uh, usually flavored like demon infused humans. Horror, like horror and ghost stories from 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 Asian cultures. Oh my are god! Just amazing. I would love. I would. Oh my god! Like, where's my where's my ring girl? D and D monster. Okay, this is gonna be D and D canon, but I would love to fight Pyramid Head from Silent Hill. <laughs> okay. Period. That's my answer. No, that that, that, yeah, yeah, that's that, that counts. <laughs> Uh, look up the Sora Swarm. They fill a lot of those niches, especially the the um, Silent Hill niches. Mm. I think there is one that is kind of pyramid heady. I could be wrong, but we gonna have to look it up. I now. think Blade Swarm might be something. Uh, anyways, yeah, yeah. Flail Snail. You've Flail never snail. fought a snail. I've Flail never snail. fought one. I've never used one. But those things are just the most ridiculous fucking monster. I've never heard of it. What is it? Okay, it, it is. A snail, a giant snail Fair. that is impervious to magic mm. and has flails for tentacles. Like, just fucking maces. That... I'm sorry, is this canon? This yeah. is canon. Yeah. Get the fuck out of town. Yeah. That sounds I will. I will legit take out the monster manual and it show you is, a picture of it. I don't know who came up with it. Oh, but... it's been in D&D forever. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I got to hand it to their creativity. Is it's, it's some That's a Gary child. Gygax. No, yeah. that was a Gary Gygax oh, okay. creation. Yeah. Straight up. Love that. Um... <sighs> I've been playing this game for over 20 years. Yeah, you know more than I do. Um, Throw down. No, there, there, it's not that there is a monster that I haven't fought or that I, I haven't used um, that I want to. There's one that I haven't used in a very long time that I would like to see at a table again. And that's 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 my boy, the Cockatrice. Um, or the Rust Monster. Preferably together in the same room. Um, uh, I've also, it's been a long time since I've seen a Grell. Or, uh, no, we've seen Grick recently. Yeah. But uh, it's been a long time since I've seen a Grell. Really love my Grell, my floating brain monsters. So you're saying a lot of words right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for someone who doesn't have an encyclopedic knowledge. Uh, so Grell are uh, floating. They're medium size. They might be small uh, in 5e, but uh, they're floating brains with long, stunning tentacles that like stun you and then they eat you as they pull you up into their beaks. They're kind of like brain octopus squid things that float in the air. No, all right. And they like to ambush. Uh, cockatrices are little monstrosity chicken things that uh, make you turn to stone with a with an attack. Mm. And rust monsters are, um, I mean, devious. Those they're devious. Fucking... They they've got little antennae that make that turn all your shit to rust if it's got metal in it. Mm. Gross. A white two. Two. Dos mas. Uh, <laughs> Diggly Blue Munya. 
Fucking, I love your great guys' names. Yeah. They're great. Uh, would you rather be a Goliath stuck in a world of halflings or a halfling stuck in a world of Goliaths? Oh, actually, you know, I was about to say a Goliath stuck in a world of halflings, but everything is not made for you. You can't fit in anywhere. Like, no. you can't go to a pub. And if you're a halfling, you're probably going to be everybody's best friend, and you got to ride everywhere you want to go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I just, I look at the height difference, and I assume what would be at eye level, and I just think of the smell. So I, and I'm already a the smell very... Rocks. So you'd be good. No. No, you wouldn't. You'd also be banging your head on things. Yeah, and if you're the Goliath in a halfling world. No, 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 no. No, if you're a halfling in a Goliath world, you gotta walk between guys' legs to, like, uh, get around. Yeah. You'd be banging your head on things. You'd be very, like, agile, I guess. Yeah. Just learn you just how to be... have to be... Just, uh, you rely watch, on that watch, luck. Watch the low-hanging fruit. Fruits? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, did we have to go sexual with this one? Yes. Um, yeah. I, I am six foot two. Uh, I am already a pretty tall person. Um, I'm used to ducking through doorways. So, mm. yeah, the first one for me. Mm. I'd rather be a halfling. Only because I am tall for a girl. And I've spent my entire life trying to be shorter. So, I would love to... I just like living in a world where I'm a short person. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> All right, my... So, I feel... Uh, you, your answer? That's how I feel about being left-handed. It was oh, fucking... Are, are, you le- are you lefty? Yeah, I am lefty. Yeah. And it is fucking annoying. There's no binders built for you. No, there I had no. to buy specialty <laughs> notepads yeah. for playing D and D that have the spiral on the right hand side. Oh, sweet baby. Oh, yeah. Why don't you just flip it upside? I, I guess not, it doesn't it's work. Not the same. It's not the same. The margins are in the weird places. Yeah. I've got twin daughters, and one of them is left-handed. The other one is right-handed, and we are constantly having to like encourage our lefty daughter that she's not doing it wrong, like. Don't worry, you're not a witch. You're not a witch. Okay, but. <laughs> her sister was a witch, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing her, she 100% would be on board with being a witch. Absolutely. Like, yes, I can turn people to frogs? Um, yes. Every woman goes through a witch phase. Prove me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Most men do as well. Let's Phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, all right, I guess it's my turn, hey? Um, I think we have one more route around. Where are we at? I've got five on red. I got seven. Nope. Yeah, seven. Uh, you got more than seven, my dude. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and seven. Six. Six and five. So we're 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 sitting at eighteen. So two two more. Yeah, two more questions. Okay, we me- we messed up the order somewhere. I will roll a dice. Um, I'm gonna roll on red since it's the uh, one of the last ones here. Red four. Um. Another skip from Reddit asks, here's a question. Since everybody on the podcast is afraid of Megan. No, it's not. That's not the question. (laughs) (laughs) And during the mob mentality episode, she was reporting from Barovia. Is she the next black widow of Barovia? (laughs) (laughs) Can I be? (laughs) You got to fight peps for it. Oh, Peppy. Her and I have just bonded recently, though. I can't break that bond. (laughs) I have a feeling Strahd's down for pol- uh, polygamy, I guess. Phenomenal. Yeah. Stop yeah. that. <laughs> I had to take a minute. <laughs> all right, well, there's my question. <laughs> I'm not answering it because of the first part of that question where we're all afraid of Megan. Who asked that question? That was, uh, I know, Skip Davis. Mm. Alex. <laughs> Sup, Alex. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm the last to rule. Uh, yeah. Okay, um, let's, let's just do red. Let's just try to get rid of most of this table. Uh, 11. Red, 11. I already did. Okay, red, 3. Red, 3. Red, 16. Red, 16. I really <laughs> want to get rid of this table. Red, 2. Red, 2. Okay. Let's, we've got another question from Alexander, another Skip Davis. What is the most unusual class that you could sensibly assign to Megara from Disney's Hercules? Megara. Yeah. So Meg from uh, Disney's Hercules. What is the most what? Sorry. The... Sensibly assigned unusual class. Cleric. Oh. Yeah. Do you have a domain? I don't remember all the names of them, but there is the one that um, I would have to look them up. I don't know. Death, grave, knowledge. Not knowledge. Okay. No, her whole thing in the so, movie in is In my mind, that... I'm bringing things back from the dead mistakably. So what is... There's one that... 
because I don't want to do life that doesn't it's not quite what it is but like um is there a fate domain because I think that might be the closest I think that, yeah I think that's what it is because like yeah. well I would say grave grave domain grave domain yeah I guess that makes sense mm-hmm. Yeah, because she's very much a person who was like accidentally brings things back to life of her own fruition and does not get punished for it. Or trickery domain. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> trickery domain would work. Um, Kyle? I do not remember this movie well enough, so I'm going to say Pack of the Undying Warlock. Fun, fun, funnily enough, Fair you're enough. not you're not, not far, far that far. Act, for somebody who doesn't know a lot about the movie. You're not you're and not she's, far. She's got a lot of attitude, so it fits. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to go barbarian. Uh, she's a strong, independent woman. I will say that. A strong, independent woman who uh, is 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 scary when, um, like, she manages to outrage the king of hell, mm. who has literally got fire on his head. So I, I feel like he asked a question about Megara and Megan. So yep. I feel like there's a thing here. <laughs> <laughs> Run. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that'll be it for this episode of the It's a Mimic podcast's mailbag. Um, this is number 20. Um, if you liked it, if you want to ask us more questions, head on over to the Reddit at r slash it's a mimic or shoot us an email at info at it's a mimic dot com, um, where we will add your questions if you want them to be added to the list um, so that they will be read potentially if they are rolled on the dice uh, during the next mailbag episode. Thank you for listening to this episode of the It's a Mimic podcast where you never know what you're going to get. Mostly sex jokes. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All of their straps. <laughs> You're on way too much about feet and BDSM. Daddy issues. Yeah. God damn it, guys. <laughs>